Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Jazz Transcription Clinic Live. Today we are going to continue with uh, the transcription of the wonderful solo played by Chris Potter on All the Things You Are in a duet with uh, Shai Maestro on piano. So far we have transcribed four choruses. Uh, remember the last one was this craziness here and today from here we are going to uh, get down the fifth chorus so as usual we are using sound slice if you want to know a little bit more about it uh, there is a link in the video description uh, of a video that i made on how to set up sound slice and start transcribing uh, so we are ready to go before we start um, hitting the fifth chorus. Let's listen to what we have done so far. That's so good. And we start here the fifth chorus. So let me just write uh, fifth chorus on top here. So just to keep things in a good order, right? And then we can also write the blocks. So this will be A1 and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like to, you know, prepare this. This is something that I was doing, you know, on a music paper, but now we can do it on sound slices, it's even more convenient. So uh, this next bar will be the beginning of A2, and then will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bar, this will be double bar, Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here we put bridge. So the B section, eight bars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Double bar line, 
<clears throat> and this will be the last A or A3 if you like and will last for 12 bars. Remember guys all the things you are is 36 bars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh -huh. and, and there you go. And today I would like also to add the chords to it so we have a better understanding of you know what we transcribe of what what's going on and we might also get a an extra help from the harmony so we are going to write down not exactly what they play because they might change it but what the traditional chord progression of all the things you are is so and remember guys we are writing in uh b flat so concert will be f minor the first chord but because we are transcribing to the tenor saxophone, uh, we are writing in B flat. So the second chord will be C minor seven, and then F seven, and then we have B flat major seven, and then we have E flat major seven, and then we have two chords here. We have E minor seven, and I guess we need to put two bars so we can divide uh what is that rest and rest all right and chord we put here a7 i'm just writing the very very simple mm, chord progression and then it repeats here and then it starts on D minor 7, G minor 7, C dominant, and F major 7, and B flat major 7. And here we are going to divide, not plus, sorry, I have to get out from chords. And this will be a minimum rest and a minimum rest now i can write the chord and it will be b minus seven and e7 and a major a major seven repeated so we put repetition here we have b minus seven again e7 a major seven for two bars and then we have g sharp uh half diminish or minus seven flat five c sharp dominant and f sharp major seven and then d7 sharp five and then we go to g minus seven and we go to C minus seven, F seven, B flat major seven, uh, E flat major seven, E flat minor seven, because this is the last A, and D minus seven, C sharp diminished, uh, C minus seven, F7 and B flat major 7 and D7. In the last bar to go back, we save this. Great, and I think we can start here, the first bar of the fifth chorus. Let's start listening from here so we get a good pulse, and then let's try to memorize those notes so we have a reference to start getting the notes in the first day there. Uh, <laughs> I have to get out from the chords. Great. So that's uh, pretty easy because it will be pretty and then quavers and then there will be a quaver rest and B flat but an octave lower of course I 
usually transcribe just the rhythm and the notes first and then once I have the whole transcription I put all the articulations but just to give you the idea I can remember that he's playing Mercato here, Mercato here, right? We don't have to do it now but just to let you know that this will be our next step once we have uh, finished the whole solo. <laughs> So this is, a, and then to quest. Ah, this is a crotchet. Now, booty. Um, those are Macato quavers. First note is E flat. But I will have to tell you something. Uh, so, do you hear that this E flat here is quite honky? But, so, he plays there as a harmonic. So that E flat, he fingers low B natural and get the E flat as a harmonic. So he get the close sound of the horn and that honky sound. Right? You hear that? Right? So all those tricks you learn when you transcribe, when you transcribe your instrument, you, you have to find out how he's going to play that sound. Because we don't transcribe just the notes. The pitch is just a small part of our job. We need to get the right sound, exactly the same sound played. And then of course to get the notes I help myself a lot with the intervals. So let's do 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 when I fall in love are the same notes or if you prefer you know I can hear a semitone here do 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 major third descending and then per perfect fourth back to perfect fourth ascending so do 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 is a Schubert melody de -do -de -da -de -da, which starts with two perfect fourth intervals down and up right and just to remember that he's using a harmonic i put a circle on top of the d flat Ta -da, that's a crotchet there is a crotchet rest da -de, da -de. You know, Verdi, Traviata. So that's a major sixth. Or if you prefer to remain into the jazz field, I would say the opening of Days of Wine and Roses. So that will be a G, isn't it? I prefer to put a crotchet and a rest. Uh, so this is the perfect example of uh, uh, why it could be convenient to put the harmony down just because he's playing, you know, he's introducing two new notes that he has implied before B natural and C sharp I mean before here 
Uh, and the only reason why he introduced those is because the, the harmony has changed. We have modulated from B flat major to D major. So therefore, B natural and C sharp is as simple as that. So here there is C sharp and then C sharp, E natural, and then C natural. Why C natural? Because he is going to D minor 7. So we need C natural. Isn't it? The arpeggio. Da 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 do 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 da D F A C C A A F right? Do D again major sixth and it's anticipated so I'm going to write that that's on the upbeat. And he starts a progression, so it's pretty natural. So da 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 do da 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 do You see, he's progressing with his own ideas, and it's fantastic because the harmony is a simple, you know, um, six two five one into F major. And so all the notes changes their weight on the chords, but he's keeping pretty diatonic and simple. So again, that's the arpeggio. Da, da, da. Uh, that's a rest. Da, do. See it like that. Ba, ba, da, do, di. Again, there is a C sharp here coming up. Da, 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 do, di. So that's a, an octave, right? Da, 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 da. You have to excuse my very bad singing, but I don't care because I use it to transcribe, right? Ba, da, da, do, di. So that will be F natural, E natural, oh, oh a crotchet, da, da, da. and then quavers, C sharp. And E natural. Um, that's a perfect fourth. On the end of the fourth. Da da G sharp. Uh, it's a crotchet G sharp. F sharp. E natural. C sharp and B natural. Da -da. And then there is a crotchet rest, quaver rest. And again, you know, he found he finds a nice idea pa da da di do do and repeats it. Da 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 di do di, changing the landing note. Da da. I could have copied, but I think because of the harmony, I prefer to write it down. Otherwise, I have to rewrite the chords. D, C sharp, do D, E natural. Oh, that's a quaver, a quaver, 
and this is tied. Whoa. Again, another repetition. G sharp, F sharp. E natural, C sharp, do, da, do, di. That's a minor seven interval. How I do know it? Because it's the beginning of Somewhere by Lenny Bernstein. Do, di, do, 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 di, do, 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 do. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a top B. Uh, and it's B natural, da, da, C sharp, C sharp, da, 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 da. right? Again, B natural, C sharp, and guess what? Here there is A sharp, because we are heading towards F sharp major 7, so he introduces F sharp and G, uh, G sharp, F sharp and E sharp, E sharp, and I think he resolves on G sharp, right? The ninth. Oh, quaver and G sharp, and this is tied. His crotch at rest and then F natural. Yeah. <laughs> so let's put F sharp. Those are all quavers, right? Ta 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 ti ta 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 ta. So all quavers. And this will be F sharp. Da da back to F natural. E flat F and then simply he simply plays the arpeggio of that written chord. D, B flat, F sharp, and D. Alright. And then repeats the same idea, but not in the same place. So he is playing what is called hemiolas. When you play a line there, it's basically like three, four, three beats, but you're playing four, four. So you repeat the phrase every three beats and you create an illusion of like a different meter going on because all the accents accents will be displaced right and there is one Ah, the old quavers. That's a minim T and then quavers do da da. So we are we are still in the world of the pentatonic or the major scale, simply B flat major. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a rest, and then he plays ba, boom, ba, ba. So look how great. Um, this is he plays do di do da da and then di do da da. Why he changes? 
why he goes down to G flat. Because the chord goes from major to minor, and the only note you need to change is the G flat, isn't it? That's so beautiful. This is a dotted crotchet, and, and this is a quaver. Do 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 pentatonic do do Tario do de Tario do de So I think he plays something like that da 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 do do and then D flat is here I heard he's going into a sort of bluesy sound introducing the minor third of B flat as we are in the resolution process so six or three six two five one so it's a good idea to apply the blues So again, uh, that's uh, this is actually not a triplet, so I think it's more accurate to write, yeah. Uh, was it G or C? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Blues, play the blues. Do, 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 do. And again, blues. And here, I think there is D natural, what I heard. And also, because I know that on the saxophone, you can do this triplet here very comfortably with, <coughs> with a side D. Uh, right so that I guess is what he plays there uh, all right I think we have finished the fifth chorus let's listen from top <laughs> Thank you. 
Right. Uh, that's good. That's gorgeous. Uh, I, I probably would like to try to play it. Um, so I will be sight reading. So be uh, patient. I put the microphone a little bit away because otherwise the saxophone might distort. And I turn it down. Let's do it. Let's try to play. I don't know, guys. I'll try my best. <laughs> just got stuck here wow that's good that's good um all right so that was the fifth chorus of uh, the Chris Potter solo. Uh, the description uh, in the video description you will find uh, also links to the previous videos and uh, we need to you know get going and uh, next episode I will try to put down the sixth and then there is another chorus, a final chorus, uh, the seventh chorus and then it will be all done and we will analyze and probably practice this solo. I hope you enjoyed and I see you next time. Remember to subscribe to my channel, drop a comment if you like. It means a lot to me to have you here. Bye!